Hi, and welcome to my garden. Today we are going to be talking all about corn. Specifically, four mistakes that many gardeners make in their Florida garden when growing corn. I absolutely love growing corn, although I haven't been super successful with growing it until now. Um, I wouldn't call this a complete success because I definitely made one of the four mistakes this season. Before we get into the four mistakes that some gardeners make when growing corn, let's talk about when to start growing your corn here in Florida. I am in uh, central um, west coast of Florida and we start our corn here around mid to late March or if you want a fall harvest you can do mid to late September. When it's time to start your corn you're going to direct seed the corn into your bed or your in-ground garden. The first stage that you're going to see is the germination stage where the seed actually comes out of um, the ground and it has the seedling. After the seedling, you have a large amount of time where the corn is going through like a vegetative growth, where you get all of these big leaves and the stalks grow tall and thick. Um, that all occurs probably within the first like 60 days. Um, this corn variety takes 92 days. Um, so the first 60 days is that vegetative state. Then what you have that happens is you get the tassels will start coming out. That's actually the first thing that you'll start to see is they'll open up and the tassels will come and the pollen will start to be created. As that is occurring and as they're opening up, you'll start to see the ears forming and they usually start very small right coming out of one of the sides of the leaves. Sometimes you can get two to a plant, but typically it's like one to a plant. Um, but once those ears come out or they start to grow, you'll start to see the silk coming out. Um, I think I have one right here. If you can see that it still has the, the white yellowish silk where this one is completely brown. Um, but those silks will come out and what's supposed to happen is the plant's tassel will drop the pollen down onto the silks. Um, Next stage is um, that pollen that drops and touches those silks. Each piece of pollen has to come down and touch every single one of these silks. Um, and the way that that is typically done is wind pollination. And so the wind will stir the stalks around causing the pollen to kind of shake down into here. Um, but you know, you can also uh, just come through and like literally shake the corn and it, it will drop the um, the pollen down onto the silks. Um, now let's jump right into the four mistakes that I see most gardeners making when they're trying to grow corn. So the first one is the one that I made this time, which is seed spacing. So when you grow corn, you want to grow it in a block like I've done here. I've done a square. Um, and they're a good one foot apart from each other between the rows. So I have several rows happening here. The problem I came into is I grew them too close together along the row. So they're only like four to six inches. I probably should have been more like six to eight inches and um, I would have gotten bigger cobs. These are fairly what I would call small. They're not tiny. I've gotten much smaller in the past. So I do call this a success, but I think if they had a little bit more room between the plants in the rows, they would have done much better. The next problem um, that I occurred, a, I had a little bit, but I see a lot of gardeners dealing with is the bug situation, particularly the earworm. So there is a corn earworm. It is a type of worm that comes and will eat either the tassels, which is kind of what's happened here. And they also eat the silks and then they burrow down into the corn. And um, as you'll see here, uh, opening up a, a cob of corn here where a silk or a earworm has dug into the corn and eaten the corn cob um, and the corn kernels. And so you could cut these pieces off and just go ahead and eat those items. Uh, this one's pretty badly damaged, so I may not do that. 
um, that might just go in the compost pile. Um, but in order to manage these types of pests, you are going to have to use something. Uh, BT is a good option. Spinocyte is another option. Being very careful to use spinocyte only in the evenings after our bee friends have headed home for the day because it can be hurtful to them. Um, there's other non-organic methods, but I kind of stick to more of the organic methods for handling the bugs. And then of course you can pick them off, but I find them to be very elusive little creatures. <laughs> um, so they're very hard to find. But the easiest way to know if you have them actually is you'll start to see chewing of the leaves. You'll see what's called frass. Um, so if you look in between the leaves, you'll see some of the, the worm debris, <laughs> the worm poop that's left behind from the earworm that's eating. Um, so you'll see that as frass or like this brown, like crumbly stuff. Um, you'll see it in the tops, you'll see that they'll eat the tassels off, you'll see that they'll eat the silks off, you'll see that they burrow through the side of the corn, there's lots of ways that they get in. So make sure that once you get past that vegetative state and you start getting the tassels that you start spraying immediately and you spray um, at least every two to three weeks if you're using spinocyte, if you're using BT, every few days depending on the rain. Um, the next issue I see a lot of gardeners have um, with corn is when to harvest. Um, and it wasn't until this year that I really figured out the, the, the trick to knowing when to harvest. So this guy right here has a yellow silk. And so they're not even close. But then you have other ones where the silk is like brown. I don't have any because they're mostly ready to go at this point. But the, bra the bottom part of the silk is brown and the top is still a little bit yellow. You're really waiting for that silk to be basically dead brown all the way to the top. And from there, all you simply have to do is break it down, kind of twist it off, and then you have your corn. Now there's another option, which I did with this one. I did take one of my plants and I kind of dug into the side of the corn, kind of spreading apart the ear of the corn to pull back the layers and then I could touch and feel and squeeze the kernels um, and press into them with my fingernail to see if I'm getting like a white or a milky substance coming from them and whether they have filled out or not. Um, so you're really looking for that milky consistency, um, slightly milky, so a white to slightly milky um, look. You're not, if it's still clear liquid, it's not quite ready. So that's um, one of the mistakes that some people uh, do is they pull their corn off a little too early. And then another issue that some gardeners face when growing corn is fertilization. Um, so when you are going to be growing corn, you have to really um, think about how you're going to feed this corn. It is a heavy feeder, um, just similar to like your tomatoes. Uh, they tend to need a lot of um, nitrogen to get that vegetative state growing. And so um, before I ever plant the bed, before I put my seeds in, I will go and I will um, put down bone meal and blood meal and I'll really rake it in good. I'll put down my granular garden tone or tomato tone fertilizer down and I let that set, watering it, for about two weeks before I ever put my seeds down into them. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is to give the plant some, or to give the bed some time to start to break down and absorb those nutrients so that when the corn starts growing, because it grows very fast, um, it will have that readily available. Um, the other thing that you need to do when fertilizing corn is um, every two to three weeks, I use a fish emulsion. Um, so a fish fertilizer, it's a liquid type of fertilizer so that if the bone meal, blood meal, and garden tone is not giving it everything that it needs, um, I give it a boost with the fish fertilizer. And because it's a liquid fertilizer and not the granular, like you're dealing with with the, the garden tone or the tomato tone, um, it gets those nutrients immediately and is able to take them up. Some gardeners will just plant and leave it and see how it does. And um, I have found that if I don't keep up with fertilizing, like I said, on that two to three week schedule, um, they start to slow down, they start to become stunted and they don't get to these really tall heights that you want them to get to in order to grow good sized corn.
So I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode. Um, I really love growing corn. Um, I'm actually one of those weird people that will just like come out into the garden, pull my corn open, and as I'm harvesting other things, I will be um, just chewing on a corn cob, which I know, don't laugh at me. It's just um, one of those silly things that I just love doing because it just tastes so incredible compared to the corn that you get in freezer section or in your canned goods section or even fresh corn from the grocery store. I feel like it just doesn't compare with the sweet taste of a corn cob that you have pulled off that day.